Before this video starts, I would like to give a huge thanks to the people who support me via my Patreon page. Without your support, this video would not be happening. So thank you. Thank you. So you suddenly need that extra action to parry or die for cover. Or possibly that opponent has just got lucky with their weapon swing and you are about to lose your head, literally. Well, do not fear, because Mithras has a system that can help you reach a positive outcome for all those events. Do you feel lucky? Well, in this video, I will be looking at the luck system in Mithras. My name's Inwells, and welcome to the In Crowd. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. You've stumbled across another one of my short rule videos for Mithras. So in these short rules videos, I try to take one aspect of the game and concentrate on it in more depth so that you can gain a, a better understanding of it. Now, this video was actually um, requested by a YouTube viewer who emailed me and asked specifically for how luck is used within classic fantasy. Now, I have to say that I've never played classic fantasy um, for Mithras. I'm more the, the full Mithras version. So I'm going to try to, I do have the rule book, and I'm going to try to look at both systems, both um, Mithras, classic fantasy and well not why not let's throw some m space in there as well okay this is going to be some challenge wish me luck see what i did there so if you've ever watched or been involved in a mithras combat situation then you will be very much aware that it is extremely dangerous unlike the other systems where you slowly and consistently hack away at a huge pool of hit points in mithras you can be finished off in one shot or a swing of a weapon can cut your head off or a few punches although he will probably deny it when asked minsk in our m space campaign was unconscious on the floor in a recent barroom fight after taking a punch to the head, a punch to the gut, and then brought down by another punch to the head. It is dangerous, but the luck system helps you remediate some of that danger. Now, although I'm going to focus very much on luck within the combat system, remember luck points can also be used out of combat in order to change dice rolls. More about that later. So according to the call rule book on page 11, luck points are described as, and I quote as I read this, luck points represent that strange force differentiating adventuring heroes from everyday folk. Call it fate, karma, or simply good fortune. Now, the number of luck points that you actually start off with is determined by the power characteristics in Mithras. In classic fantasy, the initial luck points are determined in the same way, although humans gain an extra one since they are more favoured by the gods. Yeah, that's what classic fantasy says, I assure you. Anyway, in Mithras, the number of luck points a character has never changes unless they alter their power characteristic in some way. But in classic fantasy, you gain an extra luck point every time you increase an, in level. I know that my players will be instantly jealous and envious of anybody now who plays classic fantasy. Imagine more than a few luck points. Now, quite uniquely for RPGs, your luck points refresh at the start of every session. 
So you have them throughout the gaming session with no points then carried over to the next one. If you don't use your luck points in the session, then you lose them. Okay, now when a new session starts, then your luck is therefore replenished. And so make sure you're aware that it actually is per gaming session rather than for every 24 hours or recovery of um, spell points or magic points like that. So just to give you a bit of an example, we play on a Saturday at 7 o'clock on the evening, British summer time, till 10. So at 10 o'clock, um, the session ends, and by the time the next week comes, their look points, character's look points have been replenished, and then they can use them again throughout that 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock session, and then they will refresh again. So um, remember, the only other thing that you need to be aware of is that a look point can only be used to support one particular action. So one luck point per action. So what this means is that you can't use a luck point to dodge or evade. And if you don't like the outcome, you cannot then use another luck point. Just one luck point per action. Okay, then. so what can you do with these luck points? Well, before I talk about that, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to this channel. I produce regular rules videos like this. We also have campaign actual play sessions, both for Mythras, the fantasy campaign, and now for M Space, the science fiction campaign. So please do subscribe and press that bell button so you get a notification when a new video goes live. I also make some personal videos every now and again and have a series about GMing called the Gibbering GM. And if you would like to provide some additional support, then you might have noticed <coughs> that at the beginning of this video, I said a personal thank you to my Patreons. And if you would like to become a Patreon, then please do follow the link in the comments below. There is also the link to my Kofi account there as well. Okay then, enough self-promotion. Let's get back to feeling lucky. So first up, let's talk about what luck can be used for and that is common for both systems. Okay, so the first thing that you can use luck for is something called desperate effort. Now, if a character is completely out of action points, the player can actually use a luck point to gain an action. So in the fight, for example, suddenly out of the darkness flies a homing dagger flying straight towards our hero's heart. Well, using desperate effort, the character can gain that extra action point and perhaps use it to evade the dagger as it comes out. Or if you're a mystic, maybe you could even catch the dagger. So the second option for using luck is mitigating damage or reducing damage. So in this situation, the player can use a luck point to reduce the damage um, that they are about to take by reducing it from a major wound to that to a serious wound. So remember that a major wound can have very serious consequences. That major wound is when you can get your head chopped off, an arm chopped off, a leg shattered to pieces. So this is the um, luck point that people normally keeps and saves right to the very end of the session because they don't, they always want to mitigate that damage or reduce that damage. Okay, so the next um, possible use of a luck point is actually different in Mithras or classic fantasy. It both has the same name. It's called Cheat Fate. Okay, so let me talk about Mithras first. So in Mithras, this option allows the player to re-roll any dice roll that they make or change it. So they can choose either to re-roll completely the dice roll or they can use the luck point. Instead of re-rolling it, they can swap the two digits around in the dice roll. 
So say, for example, I have a skill of 56%, but I roll a 91, which would be a fail. I could then use the luck point to swap these digits round. So instead of 91, it becomes 19, which will be a success. Now, in some cases, swapping the dice rolls will not, uh, the digits in the dice rolls will not be beneficial. For, so, for example, sticking with the 56% skill, if I rolled a 59, um, which is a failure, if I swap the digits around, I would get 95, and it's, that would make it still a failure. So that would have to be a reroll. Now, it has to be mentioned that at this point, if you elect to reroll, you can't then use another luck point to swap the digits round if that roll fails. Remember, <clears throat> it's only one digit, one luck point per action. Okay, then. Now, in classic fantasy, cheat fate is slightly different. And it works almost like D&D 5th edition advantage roll. Now, normally, I think in classic fantasy, and remember, I haven't played it, you roll two dice rolls are made. And you normally go for the first one. Well, a luck point allows you to actually pick the, the best roll out of those two. So you don't have to take the second one or have to take the first one. You can choose which one is the best. Now, the other way a player can use cheat fate is only uh, applicable to the Mithras rules. And they can actually, the character can use a luck point to make the GM re-roll a dice roll. Now, this could only be a skill roll or a damage roll. So they can say, um, I might roll at some dice and succeed. And they might say, I'm going to use a luck point to make you re-roll that in wills. And I would have to re-roll it. Or I might roll some damage and get, you know, 18. And they might say, I'm going to use a luck point for, to get you to re-roll that. Now, at this point, I have to say, be careful. Because remember, the outcome of the second roll has to stick. And remember, there was a wonderful... Um, time uh, uh, situation in our Mithras campaign when they asked me to re-roll because it was a critical of one and I did re-roll it and as the GM I got a critical of two which of course is a better crit so just be careful. Now in classic fantasy there's one more option for using your luck roll and that's called area of effect defense. Now, this is only available in classic fantasy, but what it allows you to do is to change the outcome of an evade roll for an air of effect spell, for example, a fireball or the conal breath of a dragon. So if you were going to take full damage from the air of effect, then you can use a luck point to reduce this to half damage. And in a similar way, if you were going to take half damage, you can use a luck point to take that down to no damage. And before my players watching this starts thinking we want this rule, the answer is quite simply no. Please remember that if I've got any of that classic fancy rules incorrect, then please do um, add it in the comments and I can re Put, I, well, I won't re-record the whole video, but I'll put in a disclaimer and say I was incorrect. So please do um, put in the comments if I was incorrect about anything. The other thing that I would like to talk about just before we leave luck points altogether is that you can provide the party with group luck points. So this is a, a stable or amount of luck points that the party, each member of the party can use. Now, I've actually never found this necessary. And all I find that happens is that the, uh, anybody with a very low amount of luck points use, uh, uses up that group luck points first before they use theirs. And really and truly, I much prefer it for them just to concentrate on their own. And that links to a gibbering GM video that I talked about when, you know, 
your choices that you make at character generation have to have consequences. So if you want to look a low power because you've got a high strength and you get a damage adjustment with your weapon, then sorry, you're going to have less luck. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now, just before we leave luck altogether, remember opponents can have luck as well. And I've run some systems when um, all the opponents may have one luck point in a combat. But we're trying a new feature in the M space campaign, and it seems to be working well at the moment. So what happens is that whenever a player uses a luck point, I as a GM then gain it. So if somebody in the right at the beginning of the adventure wants to reverse the digits in a skill roll or um, ask to re-roll it because it's a failure, then they get to use that look point, but then I gain it to use it um, later on. Now, this, the normal rules about look are the same. So for example, I'm not allowed to, if they um, re-roll a dice roll and then get a critical, I can't then say, I want to use my look to get you to re-roll it again. That can't happen. And what I tend to do is use it favorably for me as the opponents, rather than using it as a negative all the time on the players. Okay then, so let me know if that there is anything else that you would like to know about luck or any other video, a topic that you would like me to make a video about. And remember, if I've got anything wrong, then stick it in the comments below. So until next time, I hope all your pose roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mythrassing, everyone. See ya. Bye. And I hope you're lucky.